Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be doing a Raspberry Pi OS desktop build. So let's get started. To begin, you guys know that there's a lot of other desktop distros that you can install on the Raspberry Pi, which is Ubuntu OS or Ubuntu Main or even Elementary OS. But we are going to be focusing on Raspberry Pi OS for today's video, as well as the desktop environment that comes pre-shipped with Raspberry Pi OS, which is LXDE. So I know we could install XFCE or i3 or other desktop installs, but again, we're going to be only focusing on LXDE. Now in today's video, I am actually going to be using the Raspberry Pi 400 as well as a SD card for the installation. Now, I highly recommend using any form of USB 3 installation because it's just much faster. You'll definitely get a better responsiveness from the desktop itself. But yeah, we're going to be focusing on the SD card installation on this. Also keep in mind that the Raspberry Pi 400 has a higher clock speed than the Raspberry Pi 4 at 1.8 gigahertz, which doesn't matter because we are actually going to overclock a little if you want to. And we're mainly focusing on the build of the desktop, not the software. So if you guys are interested in top 10 software I would use on Linux and stuff like that, let me know down in the comments below and I could definitely put something together for that. But for now, we're focusing on building the desktop so it's a little bit more usable. As you may know, the Raspberry Pi OS is specifically designed for the Raspberry Pi, which means a lot of the software that they implemented is to have very low memory footprint. This way it can run as fast as possible. That comes at a cost, which means a lot of things are either disabled or not configurable. We are on the latest Raspberry Pi OS release and I made a review on this a couple of videos ago. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link on the top left. So the first thing we're going to be doing is hitting all the things that require a reboot. Popping into a terminal, I made the font a little bit bigger so you guys could check it out. Uh, we're going to set a couple of things in our boot config. So we're going to do sudo nano boot config.txt and in here I'm going to drop down to where it says ARM frequency. Now the Raspberry Pi 400 has a 1.8 gigahertz, which is pretty good. I might not even need to replace that, but you could actually step it up to 2 gigahertz and it should be perfectly fine. Now, I've also did a video where I've overclocked it to 2.3 gigahertz and it was running fine. So 2 gigahertz actually is pretty good for this. Now, next thing we need to set, which is very important on this, is ARM frequency or freak min. So we're going to set up the minimum frequency. Oop, that's an underscore to one gigahertz. Now, normally on the Raspberry Pi, default minimum frequency is 600 megahertz. And I've argued this before where the ramp up between 600 to 1.5 or even 1.8 gigahertz is too steep where you lose a lot of the responsiveness. So changing it over to one gigahertz to as a minimum frequency dramatically changes the feeling of how your desktop runs, especially when you're on LXDE where we don't have a core frequency controller. Changing this is almost a must. Now, because I also changed the ARM frequency to two gigahertz, I do need to ramp up the over uh, the voltage. So what we're gonna use is over underscore voltage equals six. And that will allow me to run this at two gigahertz, minimum frequency of one gigahertz, and that is it. Now, before the reboot, what I do wanna do is also change something that helps dramatically on the desktop again, which is drop shadow. You could see that there is no drop shadow and even in the menu, there's no drop shadow. So when I'm running like multiple applications, when they're overlapping each other, it's kind of hard to distinguish between the two applications because the drop shadow's not there. I'm just used to it because Windows have it, Mac OS has it, other Linux installs has it. So I do want to bring that back. And to bring the, the drop shadows back, where we need to go is sudo nano user lib raspberry pi config. And in here, there's a cm start file. You see this? This CM start file contains the comp manager. Now this is the default setting for comp manager and this is why I added in. I did pre-do this because I can never remember this but you could always google certain things you want for X comp manager. Like this is a ratio so it's 10 pixels so you get it you know stuff like that. Google it and you could get like different looks, especially if you like the Mac style drop shadow where it's like 25 pixels instead of 10, you could always change that up. So I'm gonna close this out and we could reboot now and we should be able to get the drop shadow as well as the minimum frequency. So let's do that now. All right, and we are back, the desktop loaded and you notice one thing, look at this, the drop shadow. Now if I open multiple applications like two file managers, I'm actually able to see the difference really easily because 
the drop shadow tells me. So already just by doing those two little things it makes it feel and look as a desktop and it operates a little bit better than what it was before. Again, drop shadows use memory. That's how come they removed it. And this does take a little bit much, a little bit of resources, but not much. Moving on. Next thing is theming. I've actually covered this before on a previous video, which I'm going to shortly cover on this video as well. But if you head over to the start menu or the menu itself, you're going to notice there is not much areas for you could for changing your theme. Now to unlock that, you would have to go into main menu editor and basically uncheck it. Go over to preferences and uncheck pre appearance settings or theme and appearance settings. These two, I kind of think it's the same thing. Um, what else is there that I could uncheck? Nope, that's about it. Desktop settings, maybe? But, or display settings. Yeah, let's uncheck all those because it's hidden anyway. Might as well just open it. Open box configuration. Okay. So let's go over to preferences and theme and appearance. So here you could actually select. There's a list of themes that is pre-installed in here. So if you wanted to change it to something like uh, clear looks, uh, Pix, Pix flat. What we're using right now is Pix flat. Window border, you could also change it to whichever you like. And it's originally on Pix. I changed it to Pix flat because I like this other blue. But I'm going to install a new theme. You can actually download themes online. There's tons of them. Just Google it again for LXDE themes. But what we're going to do is uh, let's keep it on Pix flat. Pix flat. Well, I'm going to close it. I'm not even going to change it. I'm going to install themes. Instead of having it go through the terminal, I am actually going to use their add and remove software. Now, this is a new thing that was installed on the recent desktop update. The original thing they have is called recommended software. And in here, it only has the Raspberry Pi recommended software, like the bookshelf or the Orca reader or LibreOffice and stuff like that. So it doesn't have a full collection of the Debian installers. So they actually included it back in here called add and remove software. I don't remember seeing this before. Now in this add and remove software, you basically get the full Debian library. So it's similar to what you would use something called synaptic. So it's like that, but it has like a few icons on the left and kind of categorizes it for you. Now I am going to install a theme called arc theme. So I'm going to search for that and it's going to query. You can manually look for it. It's just going to take you forever, but yes, I'm going to search for it. Once it pulls up, I'm going to be able to install it. See, flat theme. I'm going to check this off. Another thing I like to add is the breeze cursor. So while I have that checked off, I'm going to look for something else. Once I hit OK, it's going to install all the packages that I need. So let me close this out because I don't need that software. All right, so here we go. Uh, because I just typed in breeze, it comes up with a lot of stuff. I am just going to look for uh, this one, breeze cursor theme, and I'm going to Check this off, hit OK. And it should install both the packages that I just selected, which is that arc theme as well as this cursor theme. Now to change up, go back into preferences, themes and appearances, and it should have arc right here. See, arc dark or darker. And window border, I am going to switch over to arc dark. Mouse cursor, now I have breeze. See, I love this breeze. It looks really good. Hit apply. And my mouse doesn't change yet until I do another like log off and log back in. And the spacing doesn't look that great, but I am gonna log off and log back in one more time because I remembered I had to install something. So now that we have the darker theme going, it looks pretty good. The mouse didn't change yet. Um, we're gonna start looking into our software center. Yes, there is the add and remove software here as well as the recommended software, but I could still get even more software. So to do this, what I'm going to do is pop into terminal. Technically, you could use the add and remove software, but I'm going to do sudo app install gnome software center. Did I spell it wrong? Oh, there's no center. So I'm installing it one at a time just to show you guys what I'm talking about because it's kind of funny. GNOME Software Center does not really work in LXDE or Debian default in Raspberry Pi. So it doesn't pull the default images that you would find on your add and remove software. So I'm just installing the base package for GNOME uh, Software Center. And if I open it up, it's still going to be blank. 
And that's common. It, you're not going to get it to work. I wasn't able to get it to work or how to, I'm not even sure how I would fix it, but I'm not using it for that purpose. Mainly what I'm using it for is for snap and flat pack. All right, let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to go into the menu, go over to preferences, pop over to software. You see this new icon. I'm going to load this up. Let's go shopping, but nothing gets loaded. It looks like it wants to, but nothing gets loaded. It tells me what I got installed. It does tell me if there's updates as well, but nothing gets loaded on here. So what I'm going to be doing right now is sudo app install snap D that will install snap package or snap manager or snap. And the next one is flat pack. If you combine those two along with the Debian software center, you basically have tons of software that you can install. So next thing we're going to do is sudo app install flat pack. I'm going to have all these commands and everything uh, linked in the description down below. So you don't have to memorize it off the screen. Now, because I install flat pack, uh, you do have to install the repository and it is something I will never ever remember. So I'm going to open up the browser and I'm going to install flat pack repo. Just Google that. Aha, uh -huh. flat pack setup Ubuntu. And what I do need is this right here. Flat pack remote add. If not exist, this is the line we need. Again, it'll be linked down in the description below. I'm going to paste this into a terminal, add that in there. I don't need this. All right, we're not done yet. Next thing we do need to do is sudo app install gnome software plugin flat pack and gnome software plugin snap. It's going to install both those plugins. So our gnome software center will actually be able to read off snap packages as well as flat pack. Now I might need a reboot. Let's give this a try. If I was to do software center again, might not need it. Oh, there we go. Getting flat pack metadata. And it should start populating everything that you would see from flat pack. And there we go. Now it's populated. So let's try to install something because uh, let's see um, Tetris. Tetris seems to be something easy. What I'm going to do is hit install. And this is from flat pack or flat hub. Uh, installing through this flat hub or flat pack or whatever it is does take a little bit of time. It is doing something. It looks like it's frozen. And then like all of a sudden it just becomes 100%. All right. So there we go. It installed. It just like, it's a weird thing. It pauses for like a minute or two and then it, it jumps to a hundred. So let me hit launch. I don't know if I could launch it from here. Let's give that a try. Oh, it does work. Now, one thing you have to notice is that after I installed this application, I actually did not create a startup group menu thing. And that's one of the problems with this uh, using Raspberry Pi, GNOME software center, as well as like not having the correct properties. Um, it does have an issue trying to run programs, but the hindsight is that you are uh, able to get the programs that you normally would not be able to find. So this is just Tetris, you know, you could play, you know, whatever it was, and then we installed it through FlatHub. So just letting you guys know it does work. And that's something I do use if I need to install a like GIMP or something like that. Now, if I need to run the program and I don't have my software center open, uh, what you would need to do is actually run FlatHub, Flatpak, and then list. This will actually tell you the program itself, which is what you need over here. And then flat pack run. And then that's the name you would put in. And the program runs just like that. You can make a shortcut for that and pop it into your menu over here. So you would have to manually do this process yourself. Um, I try to play around with these flat pack shares and stuff like that. And I'm still not able to really get it to properly work. Maybe a little bit more Googling. You could find out how to perfectly assign the flat pack into our Raspberry Pi. But this doesn't really stop me because I really do only install one or two programs, which I will make my own little menu startup. Now, last but not least, one thing I highly recommend doing is changing the normal file manager. So this is Pac-Man. And while this does work, I'm not a huge fan of using Pac-Man as my file manager because I'm just, I like the other ones that I find. And normally what I sway towards is Nemo. So to do that, it, 
we will do sudo app install Nemo. And Nemo will is also a lightweight uh, file manager, but it gives you a little bit more uh, plugins that you could play with. So if you wanted to hook it up to Nextcloud or have a right-click option to extract files, you could do that with Nemo. So once you have it installed, you could just go to files and already you could see the difference. I have a little bar on the bottom that tells me how much disk space I have. I mean, the icons look the same because that's what we're using. So this is our old one and it has a tree view over here. Uh, we have other stuff here. If I mount something, you could see that there's a file system, like it'll show you the bar. Uh, if I right click on something, I could actually open up a terminal as root. If I had a file in here somewhere that I could extract, I could right click and extract it. I just find that Nemo is a little bit better of a file management system, file manager than of Pac-Man. And to change it um, to default, what you would need to do is actually install something called LX Sessions Default Apps. That is actually not installed by default on uh, LXDE over here. Now, once that's installed, uh, what this does is it allows you to set default applications like your terminal, file browser, and all this other stuff. So we're going to pop over in here. Uh, we're not going to see it in here yet because we also, again, need to go into the main menu and unhide it because I don't know why it comes hidden in default. Technically, LXD has a full menu thing that has everything inside, which I didn't install. That's probably why you don't see anything. But in here, I could open the default session. And if we wanted to change the terminal manager to LXDE, uh, uh, I mean LX terminal, or change your launchers, email clients, all this stuff, this is what you could do over here. Uh, in here, right now it's disabled. I'm gonna close this out. I think I have to reopen it twice. There you go. See, you see how there's file manager? I'm gonna select this, close it. And you still won't see Nemo because Nemo never comes up on here. So what we have to do is actually edit the file real quick. So back in our terminal session, we just go to our root folder. So I'll just do CD. Then I'll change directory again to config. In here, we'll go to LX sessions and LXDE. And then we will have to nano the desktop config file. Uh, we are gonna add something called file manager command equals Nemo. Now I'm going to do a reboot and it should take an effect. All right, so we are back from the reboot and notice my cursor has changed. I really don't like this wallpaper. I really want to change it to make it look so much better, but uh, we'll leave it for now. Um, if you go over to preferences to default applications one more time, now it's going to say Nemo. And we do need to change this because this goes directly to Pac-Man or PC file manager. I keep saying Pac-Man, but it's not Pac-Man. Um, what I could do is add and remove panel items. And actually, you know what? It's not that. I go here and go to launch settings, the file manager, remove that, go over to accessory, and it's called files. And I am gonna add this into here, move it back up. And now this will always open in Nemo. And that's basically about it as far as setting up desktops. I mean, there's a lot of softwares that you could install to make it better, like using uh, Flameshot as a screenshot manager, um, LibreOffice, or other office uh, utilities that you want to might that you might want to use. Uh, they use Mousepad as a text document editor, or uh, you know, if you want to install Putty, because that's something I like to use, you could install Putty through. Um, uh, flat hub or even through the regular repository so that's what i mainly do to my raspberry pi desktop before i start loading it up with applications which is setting up the drop shadow changing the minimum frequency overclocking it to two gigahertz uh changing the file manager and adding some software center so i could actually download more software than i need to that's my base once I'm done with that, then I start loading in all the applications that I normally use and definitely changing out the wallpaper. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. These little tweaks that I did to the Raspberry Pi OS will give you definitely a better experience, especially with the drop shadow and the ramp up of the minimum frequency. Uh, if you guys have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.